Three years ago, a group of female Twitter employees decided to come together to form hashtag angels to pool their collective power to make tech investments and work on getting more women involved in startup investing as well. Since then, Angels has invested in more than 50 companies and 30% of those businesses have a female co-founder or CEO. Jessica Verrilli, a former Twitter vice president and founding partner of Angels, joins me now here in the studio. I'm so glad you're here because I have been trying for three years <laughs> to get you guys to come on the show to talk about this. And it's actually three years ago this week exactly, that, yes. you, that you founded Angels. Talk to me about what the origins were, where the group started, and how it has evolved. Absolutely. So Angels was founded by myself and five other technology executives. We formed a close bond together over our experience in working at Twitter together. And one day, I think it was my birthday party, in fact, uh, the six of us were having a discussion and decided we should be more active in the industry, investing and trying to help shape the future set of companies coming out of Silicon Valley. And as a group of six women who have built our career in the industry, uh, we felt like we should lean into this opportunity and angel invest that we had seen many of our male colleagues do. Now, some of you still work at Twitter, some of you have moved on, but Angels has remained and you've held these massive women's networking events and dinners and you're engaging with you know, the rest of the VC community as well. Talk to me a little bit about the mechanics because you've made over 50 investments, but you don't all have to agree and you That's don't all right. have to invest, right? That's right. So we're an investment collective. So the six of us make individual investment decisions, but we collaborate to share knowledge, share networks, build a brand and build something bigger together. We've invested, as you mentioned, in over 50 companies, but our mission is really to get more women on the cap tables of successful startups. So in addition to investing, we host events and conversations to promote and support women in the industry. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the cap table thesis. So let's talk about what the cap table is. This is basically the document that lists the payouts of who will get what or how much when a startup exits, right? Mm -hmm. And your point is that there's a huge gender gap on the cap table, you know, how big is that gap? We think it's significant. So the cap table, as you mentioned, records who owns companies, records the shareholders and how many shares each own. And in Silicon Valley cap tables, there are four groups of people that get major ownership in a company. Founders, executives, early employees, and investors. And we know women are underrepresented in every one of those categories. So even if, for example, a company has 30% women in their workforce, if they're not in those key roles, it's likely they own much, much less of the company. And we think this is really important because the wealth creation that occurs through the cap table of Silicon Valley is what funds many of the downstream institutions in our industry. So if you want to start a VC firm, or you want to angel invest, or you want to bootstrap a company, having the financial resources from an exit and being on the cap table is really critical. So if we don't have women and underrepresented minorities participating in the wealth creation of Silicon Valley, um, that's an issue that we think matters, something we want to talk about, get. Uh, get founders and venture uh, capital firms to begin me measuring and publishing. So we know women are underrepresented among investors at tech companies at large, but what you're saying is they're even more underrepresented in the, in the wealth creation and the amount of money that people are actually making. You're calling on various groups to you know, make some changes in how they do business to change the gender gap on the, gap, the cap table. One of those things uh, you're asking is for founders to prioritize diversity when considering who to take money from. Well, founders might say women investors don't have the track record yet, or you know that's the same thing that LPs say when they when when I ask them about why they're not investing in more uh, female-focused funds. You know what what's your counter to that response? A lot of opportunities in our industry come from relationship networks, where early employees or co-investors are a simple phone call from someone who has access. And so we think it's really important to diversify those relationship networks and bring women and underrepresented minorities into the offsites and the social meetings and the seed of this community that brings a lot of access to opportunities to co-invest, co-found, or be early employees of these companies. Now, you actually left Twitter for a few months to work at Google Ventures. And you know we know that women are underrepresented in VC. Why do you think this problem has persisted in so long? You then went back to Twitter. Jack Dorsey, when he returned, he asked you personally to return. You know, what was it that you saw in the world of VC that sort of um, 
made you realize why this is such a problem? I love investing. It's actually the first job I had out of college. I was uh, I was on um, a venture capital, a different venture capital firm. I've been angel investing really actively the last three years. Um, I think uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of systemic reasons why women and uh, Black, Latinx, and other uh, racial groups are underrepresented in our industry. What we're trying to do with angels is one, be visible examples so we have more role models of prominent women in the industry. And we are hoping to help women take on these key roles so that there can be more wealth creation in the industry to, to ultimately promote more diversity. Now, I got to ask you about Twitter since you worked there for so many years. Uh, Twitter had what may be its first or one of the first TV commercials during the right. Oscars. Yeah. Last night, um, the Twitter, main Twitter, a main Twitter Twitter account sent out this tweet saying we stand with women around the world to make their voices heard and their presence known to bring them front and center today and every day join us as we say here we are uh, last week also Jack Dorsey said he's recommitting Twitter to increase the collective health of conversation and this is a company that has struggled with healthy conversation in many ways it's been sort of a tool for women's voices to be heard but also for them to be silenced. Do you think that Twitter really can become a nicer place? I do, and I believe that because I know how committed that leadership team is, and I was excited to see Jack's tweet last week, which I thought was transparent. It was candid, and they were asking for partners to help them solve these problems. What are some of the things that you learned at Twitter that you are integrating into your investment decisions? Mm -hmm. um, Gosh, Twitter was such an incredibly interesting and complex company. I think, um, you know, culture and how you build the early team of a company has a lot of influence. And so we work with founders in the, when they're in the early stages of building their teams to bring in particularly diverse networks of early employees and, uh, and co-investors.